Dear Bishop Thomas and dear brothers in Christ, in the gospel just read, Jesus expresses his disappointment that only one of the ten lepers cured came back to thank him. That's why this Mass is a fervent thanksgiving to God for the 80 years of blessings I have received as a Jesuit. Before the Mass started this morning, the narrator, Father Lewis, gave a very detailed account of my Jesuit life. Here, I will only highlight a few experiences. I will start with one from the Institute for Home Study. There was a lawyer in Bombay who was a prosecutor for any crime committed in the Bombay dock area. He was a seeker, not only for justice, but also for God. He had completed not only the introductory, but also the advanced course of Father Suntag. For anyone coming this far in the correspondence course, Father Sontag had also written a three-day re retreat book so that the inquirer could make a retreat either in his or her own home or come to DNC itself to make one. This lawyer chose to come to DNC. He had in his hands the three-day retreat manual to guide him and I also visited him in his room twice a day to answer any questions he might have. On the second or third day of his retreat, he asked me to explain more about the Ignatian five-step formula for an examination of conscience. I told him, I will come to your room at 11.45 this morning and make my own examination of conscience so that you can listen to how I pray. That day, I felt very close, not only to God, but also to that lawyer as I made my own noon examine. Here's a second story from the IHS work. In the early 1960s to 80s, the IHS office received many letters from inquirers. However, that one word, the nobly, puzzled quite a few of them, so that we received letters that flattered us like the Nobel College, or one that chagrined us because it was addressed to the nobility college. Father Karras kept track of 10 or 15 different ways in which they spelt the word de nobili. A third experience concerns a health issue. When that national meeting of CEC directors was being held in Goa in 1986, and they voted to start an association of Catholic inquiry centers, I was not feeling completely okay. That spring and summer, I was in the USA for a home visit. Since my two brothers had died of heart attacks at the age of 62, and I turned 62 in May, 1986, I was a bit concerned. After consulting a doctor, he suggested that I take a stress test. He said, if something were wrong, it could be taken care of here in the USA, and you could then go back to India renewed. The stress test revealed that my heart was weak and got weaker under stress. An angiography done in Chicago at Loyola University's hospital 
revealed six coronary heart blockages. The surgeon said he would bypass five of them. The night before the surgery, the surgeon himself came to see me to make sure he would be operating on the right person. Also, the two doctor anesthesiologists who would put me to sleep also came to see me one by one. Surprisingly, both were Indian Americans, one a Catholic graduate of St. Xavier's College, Bombay, the other a Muslim from Lucknow, NUP. He asked me if I could speak his language, and when I arrived to when I replied to him, my Torah he laughed and laughed. In their company, I felt completely relaxed and was more ready for the surgery. Two cardiologists here in India marveled how well that surgeon and the anesthesiologist in Chicago did that work 35 years ago. Fourth and last experience. The narrator of this story has already told you about the founding of the Family Welfare Center in Pune. The then bishop, William Gomes, asked the Fatima sisters at the diocesan congregation at that time to supply a sister nurse from their congregation to begin this work. In the beginning, she began to teach natural family planning to women in their homes in her area. The women taught, liked the Billings mucus method and were willing to teach this method to other women especially in the slum areas. The Indo-German Social Service Society provided funds as a kind of salary. Teaching NFP to such people was only a beginning of social work. Groups of women in the slum areas under the guidance of the sister nurse began to seek free legal advice from themselves about government schemes or training in some kind of work to help find a job. Celebration of International Women's Day and so forth. When this center had been running successfully for 10 to 15 years, I found out that doctors John and Lynn Billings of Australia were coming to India for an appearance somewhere in India. I invited him and his wife to visit our small family welfare center. He happily agreed and was a real inspiration for our teachers. He also gave a talk in the seminary hall, Papal Seminary Hall. We found out later that he had talents in a field other than medicine. A prominent lady in the camp area of Pune, who was an expert in teaching sex education with values to school and junior college girls, invited the Billings to an evening dinner at their home. At the end of a delicious home-cooked meal, Dr. John Billings quietly got up from the supper table moved to the upright piano nearby, sat down, and played music for the next 20 or 25 minutes without any sheet of music. He was a family man to the core. With my sharing now over, you will better understand why this Mass is a thanksgiving Mass to Almighty God for all the blessings he has showered on me.